Okay, so welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be doing a top 10 video. It's going to be my top 10 favourite Resident Evil games. So jumping right into it, it's going to be a controversial one. Don't come from my throat, alright? I have an explanation for it. So number 10 is Resident Evil Survivor. Now, I know this game is bad. I'm aware. I'm not trying to defend this game in any way, shape or form. I know it's a terrible game. It's literally just reused stuff from Resident Evil 2, basically. That's all it is. But personally, the reason it comes number 10 on the list and even makes the list I think it's because of nostalgia, a lot of nostalgia involved in this, I used to play this game constantly. The story for this game isn't even bad, and also Sheena Island, where this game takes place, does play quite a big role in the Resident Evil series, it's where the T-103s were made. I don't know, it's definitely nostalgia that puts it at number 10 for me and even makes it on the list. I just have really fond memories of playing this game. I like the soundtrack, it does have that classic Resident Evil feel to it. And let's be real, it could be worse. Number 10 could be Resident Evil 6. Coming in at number 9 is going to be Resident Evil 7. Now I absolutely love Resident Evil 7. Brilliant game, really interesting and brought Resident Evil back to what it was really. I've completed it countless times, I've platinumed it and I absolutely love it. It does have a Resident Evil feel to it. Not like the old ones but it does have a Resident Evil feel to it. Nothing bad to say about this game. The only thing I don't really like about this game is the moulded. I just wasn't a fan of the moulded. I wasn't a fan of the story really. I, I think it's got some brilliant characters. I think Jack Baker is one of the best villains in Resident Evil. He literally feels like a tyrant. I think he's brilliant. It's just the whole Evelyn stuff I wasn't really interested in. The virus itself isn't really interesting. The moulded are not fun enemies to fight. They're really annoying. And shockingly the game being first person isn't even a criticism for me. I quite like it first person. I thought it was a nice change up. One of my favourite things about this game is all the callbacks to the old game. A non-steroid using Chris shows up and he looks a lot more like his, his old self, which I really like. I really prefer Chris's look to the Resident Evil 5 look. You have mentions of Alyssa Ashcroft from uh, from Outbreak. There's just small things like that they put in for classic Resident Evil fans to enjoy and I love it. But yeah, nothing really bad to say about this game. It did really well. It brought Resident Evil back on the map. Before this game was released, Resident Evil was seen as sort of a joke with Resident Evil 5 and 6, especially 6 of how bad that game was and with the reputation that game got. So yeah, number 9, Resident Evil 7. Coming in at number 8 is Resident Resident Evil Outbreak. This is probably the majority of people's favourite games or it's definitely in their top 5. It is a brilliant game, the story in it is so so good. This game shows the whole of Raccoon City, it shows what's going on in the whole of Raccoon City, the very early days of the outbreak. You've got some interesting characters, Kevin, Yoko, they're really interesting. The gameplay style of it was really fun, the only criticism about this game, and I think it's literally everyone's criticism, is the infection meter you have and it, I think it does, it really does take away from the gameplay of it. If that wasn't in the game it would be so much more enjoyable. The fact that you sort of have to rush and find these in, these pills to slow the infection down and stuff like that. If you could just take the game at your own pace, it would have been so much better. I don't know why they added that infection meter in. But that is literally my only criticism for this game. I absolutely love it. You get some story about characters like Nikolai from Resident Evil 3. There's so much lore involved in this game and it's my favourite thing about it. Coming in at number 7 is going to be Resident Evil Zero. Resident Evil Zero is such a cool concept, it takes place before 1 and you get to play as Rebecca and Billy. Billy is such an interesting character and I really wish they would bring him back. I really want to find out what happened to him after the events of Zero. But the reason I'm putting this game number 7 and not any higher is because the gameplay of it is really weird. It's not that I dislike the gameplay, it's just that it's really different. I don't like the item box stuff, I really wish there was an item box in the game. I don't like how you can drop your stuff in random places. Another thing I don't like, which is a bit of a nitpick, is how sort of badass Rebecca feels as she as you progress through this game. Because, you know, this is meant to be before Resident Evil 1. And when you see her in Resident Evil 1, she's really like timid and like clearly not skilled in the slightest. She's like she has no clue what's going on. And it just doesn't make any sense from a storyline perspective. To justify that in my head, I've always thought, okay, she's been through all this at Resident Evil 0. She's come from 0 right to Resident Evil 1 in the mansion and she's probably really tired and it explains why she lacks in skill and stuff like that. That's what I've tried to do to justify it. Other than that there is a lot I love about this game. Like I said I love the characters, I love the enemies they introduced. Some of the enemies they introduced are really cool. I do like the monkeys. Something that was interesting to see but it wasn't annoying. I love the foul tyrant boss fight. I thought that was really cool. This is a great game with a great story, great characters. There's just a few small things that make it less enjoyable for me which is why I've put it at number seven. Coming in at number six is Resident Evil 1. The reason Resident Evil 1 comes at number six is mainly just because of how dated it is. There's nothing bad to say about the game. You've got to remember this game was made in 1996. Everyone knows how terrible dialogue is. Everyone knows how clunky the controls are. That's to be expected. The game's really old. And yeah, like the games previously mentioned before one, there's nothing bad to say about it. It's just that there's so many other better Resident Evil games in front of it. Resident Evil 1's what started it all. It started all of our love for Resident Evil. Introduced some of the best characters. You've got Jill. Barry's one of the best characters in Resident Evil, in my opinion. I love the location of Resident Evil 1. The mansion, the guard house, the lab. Everything about it is so good. This game definitely has one of the best settings for a Resident Evil game, hands down. The boss fights are cool, they were just executed poorly, but like I said, you can't really comment on that, it's a 1996 game. Plant 42, I wouldn't even class as a boss fight, if you run circles around him, he can't even hit you. Neptune in this game is for some reason classed as a boss fight, even though you don't even fight him, you literally just release the water. The tyrant you can't even get hit by, if you just keep your distance, you're guaranteed to kill him. So the boss fight ideas are really cool, 
and they did fix that a lot in Remake, which I'll go over later. But yeah, nothing bad to say about this game. The only reason I'm putting it at number six is because of how dated it is. Coming in at number five is going to be Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4 changed up the whole scene. This is what made over the shoulder games a thing. This is what got it really popular. Same with quick time events. I know there's games that had quick time events before Resident Evil 4, very few games, but Resident Evil 4 is the game that got it noticed and got it popular. Even though personally I'm not a fan of them, it did change up things in the gaming industry. Like everyone describes this game as the downfall of the Resident Evil series. And I would agree. I would agree that this was the start of when Resident Evil went bad. But it's such a good game with so many cool enemies. You're playing as the best character in the Resident Evil series, in my opinion, Leon S. Kennedy. And the game's got so much replay value. Resident Evil 4 is probably one of my most played Resident Evil games. Back in the day, I used to play this game for countless hours, multiple times, and I've just got such fond memories with it. The only thing I don't like about this game is the set path you take. There's no going from point A to point B, back to point A and then to point C. There's none of that. There's no exploring. There's no going back to see if you missed anything. And that's just not in this game. There's just one set path. That's really my only criticism about this game. Other than that, I think it's really fun. I think it's got more replay value than a lot of Resident Evil games. The boss fights in this game are okay. I don't think they're amazing. They're just decent. But yeah, number five is Resident Evil 4. Coming in at number four is going to be Resident Evil Code Veronica X. I absolutely love this game. And to be honest with you, until a couple of weeks ago, this wasn't number four on my list. But it was a weekend a couple of weeks ago where I completed this game multiple times. It was like four times within the space of two days or something, I was just hooked to it. I was really hooked to it. And I forgot how good the game was because it had been a while since I played it last. It has the classic fixed camera angles, but the camera sort of follows. So it's a bit more convenient for modern gaming. You play as Claire and Chris. You can't go wrong with them too. The boss fights in this game are phenomenal. My favorite part of this game has to be when you fight Alexia in the Resident Evil 1 mansion replica. That part is so good. You've got Wesker there butting heads with Chris and then Alexia gets involved and it's just such a throwback to the Resident Evil 1 days and I absolutely love it. You've got some interesting new enemies in this game. You've got the Poison Hunters, which I thought was a really good addition. This game is one of the best soundtracks when it comes to Resident Evil. Soundtracks are a huge thing to me when it comes to games. You've got the T-08 boss fight on the plane, which was so good. Man, back in the day, I was stuck in that for ages. It took me forever to get past that. This game is just phenomenal. It's such a fun game to play. And like I said, it's only recently made number four for my list. I just forgot how good everything was in this game. And it pains me to pull it as number four. I really wish I could put it closer. Now we're into top three. Coming in at number three is going to be Resident Evil 3. Now, considering that this game was meant to be an expansion of Resident Evil 2, it is really, really good. The original idea for this game was that it was going to be an expansion to Resident Evil 2, but they just ended up making it its own game. Resident Evil 3, you're playing as the best female protagonist, in my opinion, Jill. You got the introduction of some really cool characters. Carlos, who I really wish you would see more of. Mikhail, who's a really good character. Nikolai, one of the best villains in Resident Evil. You have the best tyrant to ever come out of the Resident Evil series, Nemesis. Running through the streets of Raccoon City and hearing Nemesis' stalking theme has to be one of the creepiest things ever. There's just so many good things about this game, even small things like the gunpowder. That was so interesting and such a cool thing to add into the game. Quick turning, something really small, but it really helped. You can dodge enemies. You've got the choices you can make, whether you go into the police station or whether you fight Nemesis, whether you jump out of the window with the train or whether you just force the train to stop. The clock tower boss fight of Nemesis has to be a standout moment for me. I absolutely love that boss fight. It's so cool. The setting, the music, everything about that boss fight is amazing. And not to mention it was the last of Raccoon City, so the game was a special place in my heart. But yeah, that's Resident Evil 3 coming in at number three. Now we're on to number two. Number two is going to be Resident Evil Remake for me. I absolutely love this game. It is very rare that you get a remake that's better than the original. I stand by that with everything, with movies, with most games. It is very rare you get a remake that is better than the original. This game absolutely smacks the original. In terms of everything, in terms of gameplay, in terms of new locations, in terms of weapons, in terms of enemies, in terms of boss fights, in terms of soundtrack. Everything about this game beats the original. One of my criticisms about Resident Evil 1 was the boss fights, but they fixed that in this game completely. Neptune is actually a threat in this game. Plant 42 is a lot harder to kill. You can't just run circles around him. You have new boss fights like the Crimson Head. Such an interesting boss fight in addition to the game. The best part about this game is the added lore they give with the Trevor family. That was such a good thing to add to the story. The whole Trevor family stuff made the game so much better. You get backstory as to who built the mansion. You get backstory as to who they started testing on first and just stuff like that. It made so much more sense. And obviously the dialogue is way better. It's so much more polished. But yeah, everything about this game is just incredible. I've played it multiple times. It's got so much replay value, way more than Resident Evil 1. And I just have to put it as number two. Now, finally, on to number one, my favorite Resident Evil game of all time and my favorite game of all time, like throughout any game, not just Resident Evil game. It's Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 2 Remake. I have to put them both number one. I can't pick between the two. The reason I can't pick between the two is because there's some things that the remake does way better than the original, and there's some things that the original does way better than the remake. And I'm not going to go into what that is. I'll probably do a separate video on that. But let's talk about how great Resident Evil 2 is, all right? This game 
is insane. It's got the RPD station. It's by far the best location in any Resident Evil game, in my opinion. The soundtrack in this game stands out to any other Resident Evil game. Same goes with the boss fights. Fighting Birkin and the multiple forms of Birkin is so interesting. You're fighting the man who created the G-Virus. It's the introduction of my favourite Resident Evil character, Leon. It's the introduction of Claire. The introduction of Ada. They introduce so many iconic characters in this game. The nostalgia I get when I play this game is just unmatched. This was the game that I played most as a kid. I was really young, I was maybe about 4 or 5 and I was playing it and it scared the crap out of me but I still loved it and I still played it. There's genuinely not a bad word I can say about this game. I love this game down to the small details of the precinct keys for example. I love how unique that was. You've got Mr X in this game who appears at the most random times, specifically that part where you raise the tram and you see him on the screen and then he hits the screen. That part is just such a what the fuck moment, like you don't know what to do at that point. I could literally talk about Resident Evil 2 forever, but it's definitely number one for me. It's my favourite game of all time. Anyone who knows me knows Resident Evil 2 is my favourite game of all time. I think they've done an absolutely incredible job with the remake, and I just can't choose between the two. I love them both equally, so they're both being placed at number one. But that's about it for this video. I've been talking about Resident Evil for far too long. I don't know how much I'm going to cut out of this, but that's my top 10 favourite Resident Evil games. Leave your top 10 down below. Tell me why. Definitely stay tuned for more Resident Evil stuff. But as for now, I hope you enjoyed. Leave this video a like, share this video around, and and as always, cheers for watching.